auditioned in LA because uh, obviously I was living there and it was still the days of um, good old fashioned VHS videotapes. Uh, so you would go in and be put on tape and then the tape would get sent to Rick yeah. and the producers. Um, but so I can't, they must have been, it must have started airing already because I think I was, you know, it was a guest starring role. Um, and uh, I just remember, <laughs> I've told this story before, so apologies if you've heard it before, mm. but I had broken, my, I auditioned in July, July or August, it was very hot, and I'd broken my toe, uh, so I couldn't wear closed shoes. Stupid, I literally, like, slipped on a carpet, and my, <sighs> if this is a wall, my foot went, like, boink, into the, you know, like, your toes split yeah. into the wall. So, um, so I'd broken, or oh, I think I broke my toe, who knows? I was like, it was really sore. I couldn't wear clothes shoes. It had sw swollen up quite badly. And um, so I couldn't wear, so I was like, well, I'm going to have to wear flip-flops. And then flip-flops sort of reduces what you can wear with it. Like you can't go in in a power suit and flip-flops. Uh, and they have been quite vague about the dress. Like they didn't really say anything. And... You know, you only get sides as an actor. Um, and for anyone watching who doesn't know what sides are, it's a portion of the script. And very often they change, and especially nowadays, you know, if you're auditioning for a massive franchise like Stargate, uh, Star Wars or anything like that, they change the names um, or they put your name, they brandish your own name across the sides so that if there is a leak on the internet, they just have to go, hmm, Sue Ann. <laughs> <No. laughs> um, but in those days, everyone was a little more Harry casual about everything, I think. And so I remember getting the size and thinking, why does she, because there was no indication that she was royal or a goddess. Uh, and the audition scene was the first scene where the men come to her and she she talks, like she's, she's asking, where's Ra? And uh, Oh, when she wakes up. No, so I have oh, to. Oh, she's the, already at the, the base. base. Where they come, yeah. And just okay. before, where she says to um, uh, to lovely Don Don Savers, "You were the crown of marble and stuff." So I was. I remember thinking, I was like, "That's a cool line," and there was something about the way it was structured and written that it felt quite formal. And the only people I knew who use we are the royalty. So I was like, "Oh, maybe she's a queen." So I was like, "Well, I'm just going to play it like that." However. I had trousers on, slacks, pants, um, and my sort of flip-flops and a nice top, I can't remember. But when I got there, everyone was in like sexy, sexy tight dresses. And I remember just thinking, oh God, I have misjudged this one terribly. <laughs> um, and then I went in and again, they were like, this is a new sci-fi show. And all I was told was that Richard Dean Anderson was the lead. Uh, they didn't say anything about like who the scene would be with. And he was like, okay, go. And he said to me, oh, can you do it in an American accent? So I said, yeah, sure. Because the casting director I bred for on numerous occasions and they knew that I worked in both. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, great, thanks very much. That's all we need. And then he said, is there anything you'd like to ask? And I said, well, um, yeah. I, I said, I'm just curious. Is she, is she a queen or royalty or is she mad? Like... And he's like, hmm. He said, like, if you were to play her mad, he said, she's not mad, but they all think she's mad. So, and I'd asked that in my own accent. And he said, actually, let's do another one, but let's use your own accent and really play up the, like, regal thing. And that, and that you know they think you're mad, but you're not. So, you know, that whole thing of, like, so I was like, okay. And then I, all I remember is I sort of sat back in my chair and I was very much like, you, come come to me, you know, like that. <laughs> and, you know, it obviously worked. So that was that. <laughs> Absolutely. And then you get the script. Did you do any yes. research on Hathor? <clears throat> um, I'm ashamed to say very little. I'm much better at research now. Um, <laughs> of course, it's much more helpful now with the internet. Right, it exactly, with Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I knew she was Egyptian and I knew that she was, uh, because of course in Egyptian mythology, she is different to Stargate. In Egyptian mythology, she's much more um, benevolent and mm -hmm. kind. And her earthly form is a cow, which I've never gotten over, ever. 
nuts. Like, really? She couldn't be a cat or a tiger. She's a cow. (laughs) And she is often depicted as a cow. Uh, I was like, excellent. Um, A symbol of nourishment. uh, Yes, yes. All right, let's go with the best aspects of it. (laughs) Um, I like to think I was cast for my goddess qualities, not my bovine qualities. I mean, I'm hoping. (laughs) Um, That's terrific. But yeah, so I have I'd sort of done minimal research. And then and then I was like, oh, do I have to like sound Egyptian? And of course, when they give you all the old um, dialogue, I was like, how what how does what now uh and they didn't really say to me that my voice would be altered uh so that was a bit of a shock when i saw the finished product i knew that i knew it would be altered to a degree but i was like i sound like a man (laughs) (laughs) so you've not seen the film I had I had seen the film, okay. but I don't remember that in the film. Or maybe yeah. I saw the film afterwards. I don't remember. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I get there, and then the only other thing I remember from my first oh God, my first like day there, um, I had met Mike Greenberg because he's married to a South African girl, to Nikki. Yes. And he i can't remember how or whatever how it came up but he was like oh my wife's south african and she knows who you are and i was like oh right and he's like yeah she remembers you from south african television yada 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 i was like oh great okay then nikki turns around and says to me or maybe it was mike i can't even remember who but basically it transpired that sharon stone the sharon stone was meant to play hathor and if you guys cast your minds back there was a little film called Basic Instinct, which did quite well at the box office. <laughs> so she was apparently all set to do Stargate. And then her agents were kind of like hedging their bets. They do, because in those days, of course, actors, film stars didn't do television, dear. But she obviously wanted to work. And, I never and again, knew that. Yeah. She, so they wanted, Sharon Stone was going to do it. And then she got offered basic, basic Instinct, did Basic Instinct instead. <laughs> that obviously then wanted to become this massive hit. So they were like, right, we have to recast. So I remember very vividly them saying to me, you know, so she's like meant to be the most beautiful woman in the universe and everything. And I was like, okay, okay great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? And then on my first day, they couldn't decide if they wanted to use my hair or a wig. Um, and they wanted it very straight and obviously mine is not. Um, and so I was sort of like half in makeup. I had like one eyeball painted and the others not. And they were like playing around with the design (laughs) and I had like a head full of curlers and I'd just taken a bite out of a bagel when Rick bounded up to me and went, Hey, I'm Rick. And I was like, Oh no, (laughs) so, so not glamorous. And I could sort of see them thinking, have we made a terrible mistake? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.